focus on nets and drawings for visualizing geometry. So have you guys ever heard of what a net is in math? So it's basically if you had like a piece of paper and you cut out around the outside of the paper and then you folded it together to make a shape, it's like what shape would it form? So imagine this is, you know, we cut this out, so we're taking scissors, we cut it all out, all the way around, and then we fold all the pieces together. Are you able to visualize what those shapes are, what the shape is? What is the shape form? Any guesses? This first one, yeah. <laughs> What do you think it looks like? Describe it to me. What do the top and the bottom look like? Uh, is this a hexagon? Hexagon. Hexagon. Uh huh. So we have a hexagon on the top and the bottom. And then what are the sides looking like? Rectangles. They're rectangles. And is everything like straight up and down? Like what do you think? Of, I don't know. It's all straight up and down, right? It's not going to a point like a cone or anything. There's a top and a bottom <coughs> that are both hexagons. So drawing 101. Are we ready for this? Some people cannot draw this, which I understand, so if you can't draw, it's fine. So we're going to draw a hexagon on the top, and we're going to extend the four lines down, and we're going to have a hexagon on the bottom. So you don't have to see all the pieces, you can just kind of draw it like that, and we can see the shape. So the name of this is it's a hexagonal, hexag, that's a hexagonal, and we use the word prism. So a prism is when we have two bases that are exactly the same. How about the next one? What do we think this next one is? Yeah, it's a cone. So if we're trying to draw a cone, you could draw the two sides there and then you can draw the front kind of curvy. If you want to put the one behind, remember we do like little dotted lines to mean it goes behind, so that would be a cone. Yeah, what do you think, Cam? Cylinder. It is a cylinder, good. So we can kind of draw a circle on top, extend it down, and then draw the front of it. That's a cylinder. How about the last one? Pyramid. A pyramid, yes. And what kind of base does it have? Square. A square. So we call this a square-based pyramid. So sometimes when I try to, try to draw a square, I kind of draw like a, a parallelogram. So I make it kind of look slanty. And then from there, I go up to a single point. So all three of those sides. And if you want to do like the back side, you can do the dotted lines again. So this is a square-based pyramid. Perfect. All right, so give a rough sketch of each net. So now we're going to do the opposite. So I guess this one we have above, don't we? So this is a hexagon on the top and the bottom. So we're going to draw maybe one of the hexagons first. We're then going to have it joined by how many rectangles? I clearly may, need to make this smaller. Aren't you guys going to be jealous of me making this smaller? Don't you wish you could do this on your own paper? <laughs> Oops, I'm trying to move it. So we're going to have six rectangles off to the side. So what are we missing? One yeah, we need another hexagon to create either the top or the bottom, right? So we can really connect it to any of those six pieces. It doesn't matter where we connect it. So let's say we do our hexagon shape here. Oops. Show my hexagon for a second. <laughs> Clearly not drawn the scale because my one hexagon is way bigger than that other hexagon, but you get it. All right, so this one is the square base pyramid. That was the one that looks like a square with four triangles off to the side. How about this next one? 
How do I do this one? I know it has six sides, right? Just like a dice. So if you have like a die. Cube. Yeah, it's a cube. So we have six sides. But could I do all six like this? One, two, three, four, five. Like that? Would that fold together to be a cube? No. What's wrong with that? We need those top, the top and bottom, okay? So let's get rid of the top one and the bottom one. So we have the four sides now. So how about the top and the bottom? Where could I put it? Oh, you could put one more here. Like the same. Yeah, like I could put one here. Do I have to put it right here? No, I could put it, you know, down here even. That would work. <coughs> Do you guys see how that would fold together? It doesn't matter where we put that, the top and the bottom, just as long as they're on the right hand and left hand side, as Colin said. Yep. All right, so the next one. So we have two triangles on the bottom, like top and bottom, and then we have how many rectangles going around? Three. Okay, so we're going to have our three rectangles, or squares as I'm drawing them, it doesn't matter. And then somewhere we need a top and a bottom. So it could be, really be anywhere. So that would work. Does that make sense? So those would fold together if we cut it out into that shape. And the last one, one, two, three, four. Ooh, what kind of shape is this? What's the base? It's not quite a diamond. How many sides are along the base? It's kind of a tricky one. There's five, yeah. So we would need to draw a... Do you guys know the name of a five-sided shape? A pentagon. And then off of that pentagon, what are we going to have? Triangles, yeah, exactly. So just draw five triangles off of it. <laughs> My triangles aren't the best, but that works. Okay. Does this make sense? Do you guys understand nets? All right, and sometimes nets are going to have, like, measurements on it. So if you have, like, a homework problem where it says 3 and 4, you would just need to say, oh, these rectangles are all, like, going around the height is 3, the base is 4. Like, you would need to put some measurements on. But I think you guys will be totally fine at that. All right, is that all we have there? I think that's right.